the coronavirus has exposed countless examples of inequality across the nation and it's devastated state budgets and has left thousands of families barefoot. Barefoot? Is that a word? I guess it is in this MSN article. Anyways, the debate over California's inmate... Inmate firefighter. Inmate firefighters? What? Anyways, uh, debate over California's inmate firefighters shows how the pandemic's consequences have reached deep into unexpected corners of society. In California, it has been the difference between having the manpower to save homes from wildfires or not. So these fires have gotten so bad that they have inmate fire crews. Inmate fire crews are absolutely imperative to our ability to create hand line and do our our doers work on our fires according to bryce bennett a spokesman of of cal fire he said they're a tremendous resource apparently this is actually also saving california taxpayers tens of millions of dollars a year um, hmm. because they're not hiring actual firefighters. They're just having inmates do it. <laughs> That's, I feel like that, is that like, they're, they're just forcing the inmates into it? Like, I feel like, it's like, hey, you, hey, you held up a grocery store in 2008. Hey, go fight that wildfire. Here we go. This, I, I like this. Um, I like, I think I, this makes me angry. <laughs> it also has this, the um... largest inmate firefighter program in the country. Because apparently other states do this too. I guess we're better than picking up trash off the highway, right? They're <laughs> oh my god, they're paid a dollar an hour when they're on the front lines. Yeah, that doesn't really seem ethical. I mean, I guess it's either that or rot in a cell, not That's getting true. paid anything an gives hour. them something to do i think most prison jobs give you like 25 cents an hour so if you think about it they're balling they could buy a couple packs of smokes if they really wanted to yeah they worked in treacherous conditions with six inmate firefighters dying over the past three and a half decades they make it sound like such a huge death count and then they say six people have died over the past 35 years. <laughs> like, I feel like regardless of whether or not there was, like, if those people stayed in prison, out of that same group, I'm sure there would have been six that died in prison d- during that 35 year period. Like, yeah. This honestly, like, you know, call, call me an asshole. I haven't been there. I haven't seen what they're actually dealing with. And these pictures of the fires look pretty fucked up and scary. But, these death numbers are so low. I feel like they're not actually in that much danger. As, outside of just being paid a dollar an hour, that fucking sucks ass. Especially in California, where minimum wage is like 15 or some shit. Um, apparently... Huh. Apparently the inmate firefighters like doing it. One of them, uh, I bet it's Franc- fun. Francis Lopez says it gave me a sense of direction and a sense of worth. Uh, he spent a year yeah. firefighting uh, in prison. He said there are people who who high five you. Uh, there are big signs saying thank you to the inmates for fighting for fighting our fires for saving our homes. And you see that and you think, wow, I can do good, and I I really can be a person who is being respected. That's actually like. That's fucking. That's more. I I really more, like that actually. I, fuck, that's priceless. Fuck these, pe- fuck these people that are against inmate firefighting teams. I'm f- all for it. That After that's that. more. That is worth way more than the dollar an hour, right there. What that that quote is worth way more than a dollar an hour. Yeah. Damn. So they work. His they- one complaint. Inmates should be given a direct path to a firefighting job once they are released. At least give them an interview, he said. Oh, I agree. I yeah, I agree with that too. That's that's definitely true. Puts people, like, it's it like puts, he spent a year time. doing that. 
Yeah, like people are put in now. You're putting inmates, uh, felons, criminals in jobs, and you're giving them training for a job that's, that they can now do. That's the, and then once they're out of prison, well, it's harder to get a job because you you were a felon or a criminal. Well, now if you can get a job, you're least likely to do, to be a criminal. Yeah, the the whole point of a prison system originally was for rehabilitation was to teach people that didn't know how how to you know just how to become better people how to contribute to society and make them realize that they, that literally anyone can can is of worth and anyone um brings value to the world that's that is the actual point of a prison system the u.s obviously doesn't do it very well but i think like fucking like this is a de- is a really good step in the right direction because like especially if they actually made it so that they could get jobs out of prison because like you said they're way less likely to commit a crime again because they have an income they'll be able to afford a place to stay at and stuff they won't necessarily have to commit crimes to get by straight out of prison because unfortunately most people they get out of prison and they're homeless unless they have a family member that's willing to take them in yeah I like this quote. The door pops, you get out, and the hills are around you, and everything's on fire. There are helicopters flying by, dropping pink retardant. There are fire trucks, hoses everywhere, and you're hearing radio communications. It's a very intense scene. I like that quote. I like that. It it puts in perspective what these people are are going through, and and they're still treated like they're criminals. I mean, they they committed a crime, yeah, but this shows that they have the capacity to do good. And these yeah. pictures are super powerful. Literally, it's like, you know, like, I, man, this might sound corny as fuck, but like Jesus Christ himself said, <laughs> like, not even joking, Jesus Christ himself said this, every choice you have the opportunity to reinvent yourself. You're not the same person that you were two minutes ago. You're not the same person you were when you decided to blink just now. Like, you're always changing every decision. You're a new person. You always have the opportunity to reinvent yourself just because this person fucking, you know, again, I'm going to use this as an example, held up a grocery store in 2008 doesn't mean that they're forever a fucking horrible piece of garbage or something like they can do good. They can contribute. They can completely turn their life around if they choose to do so. Um, And but it's really fucking hard to do that in a regular prison system where everyone around you is just either raping each other or beating the shit out of each other. But when you're able to, like, I don't know, fight fires together and shit, it and gives you better morals, community. apparently. Because you have to realize, at that point, when you're when you're fighting fires, like, let's say it's a group of eight prisoners fighting a fire together, like, you're literally, you are depending on all of them to be there for you if you're in a situation where that fire is going to fucking kill you, and they're all doing the same for you. Like, everyone is depending on each other, and it really fucking brings in that like trust and people really have to fucking work with one another again because a lack of teamwork would not work in that situation whatsoever they would just fucking die yeah i like that we got to learn so much about heroism and firefighters yeah i know we've only been talking about this shit for like 10 minutes too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this has probably been like the most informative topic so far and i've I've only been going off this one msn article yeah right like just imagine if we like went on something else there's probably a whole other plethora of information about this and i guess they also like drug test them um but they do drug tests in prison anyway so i guess that's I but I, I think they're tested on a daily basis if you're a firefighter though mm. um Certain crimes, okay. If if you got convicted for a certain crime, you're actually not eligible, no matter how good you are in prison. Huh. Um, any inmate can apply, though. That's stupid. Anyone can apply, but there's some people that just no matter what won't get it. Um, so this doesn't really specify. Oh wait, here it says disqualifying offenses include. 
but are not limited to sexual offenses, arson, and history of escape. Well, history <laughs> hi, history of escape and arson 100% make sense. Sexual offenses, obviously horrible people, but I don't see what that has to do with fighting fires. <laughs> I think arson's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't fight fires if you start the fires. Yeah, obviously it, it, you it know makes nothing. sense. It makes sense. They're like, motherfucker, you're going to accelerate the fires. You're going to go out there and you're going to load gas. Thrower. You're going to load gas into your fucking hose. <laughs> uh, inmates considered for the fire crews. Oh, okay. So if um, another like step for qualification is you have to go through actual firefighter training. It's not hmm. the same length that actual firefighters go through. But it says it's, uh, I lost my spot. One second. Uh, training includes a week of classroom instruction and a week of field exercises. Hmm. But it is like the same procedures and you're trained by actual firefighters. Um, I think that's cool. They cover wildland fire safety, attack, hand tool use, teamwork, and crew expectations. Once on a fire crew, they have a minimum of four hours per week in advanced training. Okay, so so while you're on active duty, you also have at least four hours per week of advanced training. Hmm. So you're actively learning and getting better. Um, not just through regular experience, but your training while on the job. Yeah, so you put in all this work, I think at the very least. Yeah, I, I feel like these people should can... definitely be guaranteed a firefighter job. Yeah. I mean, maybe have to go through like some more classes and stuff afterwards or take a test or some shit. Um, cause you know, they're still going through less training than actual firefighters have to go through, but like, you know, there's, they're still doing a lot of shit. I feel like they should at least get some sort of acceleration towards being a firefighter if they want to do that. Um, it is possible for an inmate firefighter to be employed by Cal Fire even with a felony conviction or incarceration. So they're saying that if you were an inmate firefighter, you uh you can apply for Cal Fire once you get out. Um and I mean they're you're not guaranteed to be accepted, but you know, they could accept you. Okay, so that yeah, that's good. Um in 2018, Cal Fire and California Conservation Corps started a work st worked together to start a firefighter training and certification program in Ventura County. The program gives advanced firefighter training to former offenders on parole who were inmate firefighters. Okay, sick. So they're implementing the shit that we were saying that we sh that they should implement. We're geniuses. We should just run Cal Cal Fire. <laughs> we should. Inmate fires, fighters get paid for their labor with wages and credits. Uh, they can earn between $2.90 to $5.12 per day. Um, the cost is paid by CDCR. I don't know who that is. While fighting fires. Oh, that's sick. Okay. So while you're on the job, you can earn two ninety to five twelve per day, depending on how good you are. But while you're actively fighting fires, uh, that one dollar per hour is added onto your regular paycheck. Ah. Uh, regardless of skill level. So you could just be a comms man. Yeah, you could fucking suck ass and just you could just be really good at looking like you're working and get that one dollar an hour. 